Good evening, and welcome to the board meeting of July 9th. And as a reminder, this is our only uh, board meeting in the month of July. And Beck, if you would please call the order. Ms. Dunbar? Here. Mr. King? Here. Mr. O'Brien? Here. Ms. Fiesel? Here. Mr. White? Here. And if you all would please stand and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Before we uh, approve the agenda, uh, I just wanted to uh, make you all aware, if you've not heard, two members of the Olentangy family were involved in a serious car accident this weekend. One of these young men is a current student, and the other is a former student. Olentangy, Olentangy High School will be hosting a vigil for both tonight at 7.30, just outside the stadium. On behalf of the high school, we invite everyone to join them in this show of support. And certainly as a district, and on behalf of the administration and the board, our thoughts are with these young men and, of course, their families. I hope you will likewise keep them in your thoughts. With that, we have a motion to approve the agenda, and I know we have a couple of amendments. Yes, we do. Actually, uh, you received one. This is July 9th, as, as you know, and uh, July 10th is the, as we call it, the deadline date in, in the school business. Um, so we have uh, several addendum items for the agenda under Superintendent Action Items A, uh, A2, A10, and A11. Of course, that has to do with personnel. Um, so those have been provided for you. Also, I'd like to direct your attention to item G under superintendent action item. We are making one change. Um, the action item reads approved contract for magnetic door release installation at all OLSD elementary buildings in the amount of $27,096.64. And that's where the, the sentence will stop. In other words, we are eliminating the plus a 7% allowance of $1,096 off of that recommendation. So that is item G. Those are the two changes we have for the agenda this evening. But those two amendments have a motion to refer the agenda, please. I, yes. I wanted to pull out for a separate vote two of them, the superintendent action item A3, the uh, athletic director A3, A3. okay and C from the superintendent action item. I'm policy. sorry which one C That's like Charlie oh okay superintendent approved action. policy revi revisions as right. given okay separate vote for A3 and separate vote for item C with Got those it. four changes Motion to approve the agenda, please. So moved. Second. Second. Please take the roll. Ms. Dunbar? Yes. Ms. Fiesel? Yes. Mr. O'Brien? Yes. Mr. White? Yes. Mr. King? Yes. For the board's present board presence report, I only have two items. One is the Olentangy Education Foundation recently went through its evaluation of teacher grant requests. And I'm pleased to announce on their behalf that 16 grants are being awarded uh, for a total of just over $30,000, 30, round number $30,100. So those notices are in progress of being uh, distributed to the teachers. Um, another great effort from the OEF in supporting the mission of Olentangy Schools. The second item is we did have an executive committee meeting recently, uh, the 2020 group with its chair, Marty Johnson, and he is getting the full committee together. Once I'm able to speak with him, and he's got that group organized for coming back to us with findings, a, a final findings report to the board administration, we will schedule that 2020 meeting. And we are looking into, if everybody's in agreement, doing that at a special meeting, uh, either an evening meeting like we typically do our standard board meetings or even perhaps a Saturday morning. So we'll, we'll announce more of that when we know. But we wanted to give that 2020 findings report 
uh, sufficient time because of its complexity and, and how it interfaces with so many other activities that we're looking at down the road, whether they're immediate or long-term and strategic in nature. So with that, Dr. Lucas, superintendent's report. Good evening, everyone. Everybody's tired, I take it, from that <laughs> Well, it seems like I've been halfway around the world, and when I started looking at a, uh, a globe, I actually have been halfway around the world. But it is good to be back, uh, and this is, as Dave has already mentioned, our only uh, meeting in July. Um, and we have many good things to share with both the board and our community, as we always do. Um, we have a middle school teacher, Berkshire middle school teacher, selected for a seminar on the American Revolution at UCLA. Uh, again, uh, many times we hear the fact that staff members uh, get the summer off, and, and this is just another example of uh, uh, those summers are, are taken up by additional training. So Ellie Abadi selected for a seminar on the American Revolution at UCLA, and we congratulate her and look forward to that, what she can bring back for our students. Also, we have a, a thing called the Ralph Young All Sports Award. Um, Olentangy Liberty High School has earned that. Uh, basically what that is is the fact that uh, for each sport, you get so many points where you finish in the league, whether first, second, third, fourth. There are eight schools in, in each division. And of course, as you go through the year, uh, the, the uh, scores are added up, and the school that has the most points at the end of the year gets the Ralph Young All Sports Award, and Olentangy Liberty has done that. I believe this is the second out of three years that they've done that. So we congratulate everyone over at Olentangy Liberty High School. Also at Olentangy Orange, we have the Interact Club, and they received the 2012 Changemaker Award from Rotary. As you know, many of our um, social groups and um, uh, throughout, whether it's Kiwanis, whether it's Rotary, whether it's our brand new Lions Club, of which, of which Ms. Jenkins is, uh, has agreed to be the president of, uh, they work well with our schools, and Olentangy Orange was awarded the uh, Change Maker Award from the Rotary. Other good things, we have a Liberty High School graduate, David Vinson, was chosen as first chair of viola at the National Association for Music Educators Honors Orchestra, which performed at the Kennedy Center on June 24th. We have two graduates from Liberty High School, Ashley Speck in 09 and Dimitri Dolgov in 11, took, place, took part in the Olympic swimming trials. Now, unfortunately, they did not win to move on the Olympics, but just the fact that they were there says a lot about uh, the swim program in our district, not only at Liberty, but across our district. And I'm sure we'll continue to see individual performances like this in the future. We have uh, athletic eligibility discussion that we've been having for the past several months. And if you recall, when we had that, uh, we said in July we would present to you the um, uh, rankings of GPA around the district and similar districts such as ours. So I want to make sure you get those. If you would, Adam, please take one and pass them around. Um, several things that go along with that. Obviously, this is the middle of the summer, and, and uh, believe it or not, by the end of this month, our fall season will have started. Um, we said we would be gathering data from nearby in comparison school districts. That's what you're getting right now. Um, my suggestion and recommendation would be to take this data and this discussion item to the Athletic Council. If you recall, several months ago when we had uh, insurance questions, we created a task force. We already had that process in place in an Athletic Council. Um, I think this is a very worthy discussion, by the way. I think we need to continue to push forward on this discussion. I want to uh, especially thank Julie for the information provided uh, over the past month or so because I know that, you know, in, in her role as president at the Career Center uh, and in her role as a wife of a coach in the district, 
She has gone above and beyond uh, the call of duty to get board members and community members information. So I would like to thank her for that. And I would recommend that at, uh, in, in the fall, probably at the next board meeting um, in, in August, that we bring the Athletic Council. Mr. Rafe is already scheduled to be part of that report, but also bring uh, representatives from that Athletic Council because this is exactly what we started an Athletic Council for in the first place, is to review items such as GPA. Uh, so I wanted to make sure that everyone on the board and everyone in the community didn't think that this was tabled. Uh, it's definitely on the forefront, and we want to make sure that we are leading the way uh, in that GPA discussion. But I think, as, as most of you have seen in the emails you received from the public, some positives, some negatives, there are a lot more variables involved in a GPA discussion than to just say, we want to be at 2.0 like Dublin or Upper Arlington. A lot more variables involved. Um, and I'll have some more to say about that at the end of the report regarding my trip to China, believe it or not. Those two go hand in hand, which is amazing. Hiring updates, again, as I already stated, July 9th, July 10th, when it really happens. Uh, we have uh, said all along we wanted 20 and a half uh, FTEs for enrollment growth. Um, the second part of this slide, 51, that's the part that kind of fluctuates. I think we started out with 32, then we we're up to 40 and 45. Now we're up to 51 to cover resignations, retirements, and leaves. So we have 71 and a half total positions. So far we have 53 new teachers that have been hired. So that means we have 8.5 active postings. And we will closely monitor, as Mr. Marsh always does, the enrollment figures to determine how many of those remaining openings will be filled. Agenda items. Uh, we have Karen Sidoti. Karen, you're not here, are you? Okay. Uh, I know sometimes our, our new candidates come to the board meeting, sometimes they don't. Uh, she will be on the agenda for approval as the Orange High School Assistant Principal. Uh, we have extended service days for our new Olentangy Liberty High School Athletic Director, which is very common uh, as we transition individuals from one job position to another. Uh, we have supplemental positions. Uh, one, the diversity chair was part of the negotiated agreement that we signed with OTA. The second is, uh, is obviously new positions, our new positions, assistant coaches for the ice hockey teams. I don't know if you're aware of this or not, but we actually have a supplemental committee that reviews all supplemental requests throughout the year. Uh, this does take place every year, and to my knowledge, this is the first time that the supplemental committee has brought forth additional supplementals. And of course, uh, this kind of falls under the category of build it and they will come. Uh, our hockey programs are growing. Um, in fact, uh, two of our three have been in the, in the Frozen Four uh, over the past two years. Uh, the number of participants on those teams continue to grow. Right now, all we have is a head coach for each one of those teams. And what the supplemental committee uh, suggested was that we add assistant coaches for the ice hockey teams. So those positions are on the agenda to be added to the supplemental contract of OTA. Also, we are transitioning some of our ESCCO, that would be the Educational Service Center of Central Ohio Intervention Aids, to the Olentangy Local School District employees. And of course, again, this is something that Mr. Marsh has worked at uh, over the past several years to make sure that we are being as efficient as possible. If it's better or more efficient for us to have these individuals under our umbrella, we try to move them over and usually in the um, category of special education is where we get our employees from the ESCCO. So we are recommending some of those intervention aides to come over to Olentangy Local School District employees. Also under agenda items, we have furniture purchases, and uh, these are traditional purchases that we make every year. But one is, is very special, and that's the additional tables for Shanahan Middle School cafeteria expansion. As you know, uh, uh, or you may not know, 
Uh, Shanahan is one of the few middle schools, well, probably the only middle school that we have, uh, where we only are able to run two lines. And, of course, we, uh, we added that ability to, to have three lines, and now we have to uh, provide those students places to sit. So we're buying tables for that cafeteria expansion. I would encourage you, if you've not taken a look at, at the expansion over at Shanahan for the cafeteria, I would encourage you to do so. It's going to be very, very nice for those students. And, of course, that middle school is our lar largest middle school now. Distance learning equipment. I believe there's uh, radiant technology. Uh, there's an, a request for $52,000. You know, we've talked about this over the years, the ability to uh, have a class at Olentangy High School and have students from Orange and or Liberty tuning in. We can also do that at the middle schools. The purchase of this distance equipment, which was part of our goal, is to have that in place by the beginning of this school year. That's what this distance learning equipment will do. Uh, that allows us to provide uh, additional course offerings for students that say maybe we only have six in one, one building, but if we have six in all three, we can provide that course work. So we're looking forward to getting that up and running. We also have the mag magnetic door releases for our elementary schools. Um, this would allow handicap accessibility uh, so that it's all in one spot. And uh, that is also the, the uh, piece that I made a change to at the beginning of the meeting. Last but not least, we have pavings uh, for paths at, at Oak Creek, uh, Liberty Tree, and of course the one that uh, will connect Shanahan to Olentangy High School. We are asking for approval of those. Last but not least, I have a few China trip facts that uh, I wanted to share with you. I have uh, about a thousand pictures so I can sit up here a long, long time and talk about China. I'm going to keep it down to two slides though. I uh, just wanted to let you know I visited Beijing, Xi'an, and Shanghai. Shanghai, by the way, has 24 million people projected to have 50 million by 2030. That's a lot of people. A lot of people. Uh, in China, uh, compulsory education is for K-9. In America, it's K-12. Tracking is very popular. And tracking, of course, is where you basically start separating kids to a higher track, middle track, lower track. Uh, that is unconstitutional in the United States, by the way, but that's part of the educational system in China. Tracking begins at the K-5 level. In other words, when you're in elementary, they start tracking you. When you get to the end of your middle school years, that's when your, year, your career basically begins. Because once middle school is over, now I have to compete to get into high school, private high schools, and or, as, as we know, universities. And uh, that's quite a challenge. In asking the question of Chinese education officials, what's the biggest challenge that you have in the educational system of China, I found this quite interesting. Lessen the burden on the student. Lessen the burden on the student. Everything's about testing. And Right now, I think you have a large population of students somewhat tuning out because, as we all know, um, well-rounded students is our goal and has been our goal and will continue to be our goal. Chinese education reforms are also taking place. In fact, the, uh, the conversation that we had uh, last week, government order as of last week, so this is somewhat hot off the press, um, Provide each school with multiple measures. In the past, the measures, test scores. How are you doing? We're going to test you, test you, test you, and that's how we're going to rate things. The measures of the future, co-curricular talents, warm-hearted, that was their, their wording, not mine, uh, meaning basically invitational education, making school a nice place to be where you want to be, both from a staff and student standpoint. Relationships, student to student, staff to student, staff to parents. Ultimate goal is to produce well-rounded students. Now, that should 
start sounding rather familiar. I found that uh, uh, rather ironic in China, the government owns everything. And the people very much are in tune with the fact of what the government says. And as of last week, the government said, we're going to start westernizing or Americanizing these schools. In America, sometimes we talk about too much government and we look at our public schools sometimes and say, are they really doing what we want them to do? Now, I have to tell you, I, I flew home with an individual from China. It looked like he was about 15 and struck up a conversation with him. I said, where, where are you going? He said, Canton. I said, Canton? Canton, Ohio? <laughs> yes, Canton, Ohio. I said, and you're going to Canton, Ohio because he's going to university. Kent State University is where he's attending. Of course, being an OU grad, I won't say any more, but I say congratulations, a great school. That's all I said, uh, which it is a great school, by the way. Uh, here, though, is the attitude. They want to go to university in America. They want to go to high school, if they can, in America. I found that rather ironic in the fact that sometimes we get these uh, national or international rankings and we start talking about where is the United States, you know, in the rankings. And uh, we always want to be number one, obviously. But it's amazing to me that uh, when I was in China, they all wanted to come to America, schools. So it's, it's rather ironic. Uh, very, very good trip. An eye-opener from a perspective standpoint. I have a lot to share with you in regard to that. Last but not least, I wish this... Uh, had better lighting in it, but again, I had a thousand pictures. Uh, we visited, this was a, uh, a martial arts school, um, boarding school, 1,200 students. They start in uh, at three years old, and they go up to 25 if they want to stay that long, but these are five, six, and seven-year-old, and this is an English class, teaching their students at that level English. And uh, as you can see, the traditional rows, and as you can see very much uh, from a discipline standpoint, sit up straight. Uh, when we walked in, though, the teachers said to the students, you can have the conversation. So they totally opened up, and it was one of those crazy uh, situations sometimes, like when I walk into a classroom here and get them all stirred up, and then I leave, right? And I told the, the English teacher, I said, I apologize for coming in. And she said, don't worry, as soon as you leave, they'll be back on task. And I wasn't out the door very long, and they were back on task. So uh, a great trip, uh, an educational system that uh, uh, is very disciplined, but it also an educational system that's going through a lot of reforms, much like the United States of America. With that said and done, I will entertain any questions that anyone would have for me in regard to the superintendent report. Not a question as much as a comment. I've spent a lot of time in China um, as well. Yes. And one of the things from an education standpoint is they're required from like first grade to take three languages. Yes. English being one, Chinese being one, and then there's there's some fluctuation on what the third one is. But not starting in high school or middle school. Right. Starting in first grade, they take three languages. Yes. I always thought that was an interesting concept as we go over there and just everyone speaks English. Right. Many people speak English. In fact, that's the, that's the, I believe that's the largest English-speaking country in the world. And, and of course, it's, as you know, when you start them at five years old. They know it very well, and they always apologize for not knowing it. That was, I don't know how much it happened to you, but people would come up and want to practice their English because they right. could tell even just walking through the streets. And a lot of them would make us, if they were high school students, make us sign something that they had spoken and practiced their English yes. that they could take back to their teacher showing that they had, and this is random people walking up to you on the street and then they'd want to take your picture to put it with their paper. <laughs> right. it, was a, it, it was always the experience of how much and how anxious they were to, and how much they apologized for how bad their English was. And I always said it's much better than my Chinese and it always was <laughs> much better than my English half the time. But. Yes. Anything else? Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you. And Ms. Jenkins, the treasures report.
Yes, we're just in our fiscal year closeout process, so this meeting's a little too early to get that done with the um, financials to get here, so we'll have that next month at the business meeting, but um, trying to get completely closed out so that everyone can get started in the new year. Fun stuff. Any questions for Becky? Thank you. I have two items uh, for public participation. Number one, did you, did you get any other ones? No, I didn't. I had those. Okay. Keith brought them up to Keith. me. Right? Okay. <laughs> With that, uh, Stephen Scheid, Mr. Scheid, please. Uh, and if you could give your name and address, please, for yes. the recording. Uh, my name is Stephen Scheid. I live at 5315 Polar Drive. Lewis Center have children that attend uh, Arrowhead and Shanahan. Uh, I understand the need for the district to go to the new Common Core curriculum in all, all subjects, including math. However, I feel there's a problem with the implementation of the transition with the students who have completed pre-algebra and are being mapped into the Common Core 7-8. The learning targets for the Common Core 7 are a point-for-point -point match of the pre-algebra based on the comparison I did uh, of, the, of the two learning targets. That's the learning targets. A year ago, when our students entered sixth grade and were signing up for their classes, we were told that we would have the opportunity to take, that our students would have the opportunity to take algebra as a seventh grade grader after taking pre-algebra as a sixth grader. N now we're being told in this May we had uh, all the uh, middle schools had meetings to explain explain the changes in the curriculum and we're being told that our stu these pre-algebra students will be taking the Common Core 7A. My concern is that the material taught in this class is primarily a review of the pre-algebra is not going to provide su sufficient challenge to some of the students, in particular mine. Uh, as it stands, the major majority of the material reading as it stands, the majority of the material from pre-algebra was even repeated from the math my t son took in the SOAR program in fifth grade. So, I mean, it's almost like he's going to be taking the same curriculum three years in a row. And th that, I mean, it just seems like we're putting him backwards. Uh, by doing this, it makes it unlikely that the students will, will not be taking Calculus BC as a senior as they would ha in order to get to Calculus BC. They're going to have to take two math classes in one year for, from my experience, I mean, so much of math builds upon each other, there aren't many opportunities to do that. Uh, in, our, in, one, in the meeting I attended at Shanahan, uh, Mar Mark Rafe uh, mentioned that only 100 students district-wide take calculus B BC as a senior, and that I don't have the exact words that he used, but basically it wasn't a huge issue, this problem I'm bringing up. Well, my response is that for those 100 students, which typically these I would feel would be the brightest students, being that they're that far along with their math, uh, this is a big deal, and this is uh, contrary to the district's mission to facilitate maximum learning for every student. Currently, Shanahan has a identified two solutions for a select group of students. I was told that currently two to three students have been eligible for this exception. These students that have been identified as gifted in math or other superior cognitive abilities, and they have some specific requirements that I'm sure you can contact them for. Uh, uh, the, the first solution is to put them in Algebra 1 in the high school. However, I don't think that this is a particularly good solution as the previous math track he had all students taking algebra by the eighth grade. Thus, the ninth graders taking this algebra class would be primarily composed of students having learning difficulties in that they're a year behind on the track, the track that everybody would be on. Uh, putting gifted students in with these uh, ninth graders is not going to achieve the desired results as you have two sep separate and distinct groups that's going to require substantial l learning uh, learning and teaching differentiation. You have one minute. What? You have one more minute. Okay. The second option presented for the, was identified to take algebra through APEX. Again, this solution has 
students on a computer in the back wearing headphones. The students would be pulled as necessary to join the full class for select core curriculums. And again, I think there's issues with that. One being that we're going to need to repeat the process the following year for geometry. My, my, I would like to pr propose having algebra caught out an algebra course taught at Shanahan and possibly at the other middle schools for the top performers in pre-algebra. This could either be taught by the Shanahan staff or by a high school teacher. This would be an ex also be an excellent opportunity to boost the gifted services for math and follow through with the district's mission to facilitate maximum learning for every student. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Did you, yes, uh, Stephen? Yes. I, I appreciate your comments. Uh, and I'm going to have Mr. Rafe contact you. Do we have your number on that? Yes, you do. Okay. And give you a lucky copy of this. Yes. Thank you. And I'll give this back to Becky. Yep. Ms. Lou, if I pronounce that right, Lucy Lou. My name is Lucy Liu. I live in 2859 Sandhurst Drive, Louis Center. I also can you speak a little louder, if that'd be possible, please? We, I'm sorry. We can't, we can't see your hands going. Room. We can't hear you. Oh, sorry. <laughs> My name is Lucy Liu. I live in 2859 Sandhurst Drive, Louis Center. My kids in the Shanahan Middle School, sixth grade. I also have concern about the common course of seven to eight maths for the next semester. I was told the school should evaluate individually and which one should move on to pre-algebra one in seventh grade. The school takes the two steps first they was they have a meeting held with the math te team to determine which one can move on, and second, to if recommended by the school, they review the children's score. So I know some kids already meet the criteria provided by administration. There are three criteria. First. Uh, Explore score, second, uh, their lower score, and other com um, collective scores. So, what's the reason school do not recommend the those students already meet the criteria? So we want to give the reason, and uh, what's the um, school to evaluate the individual student? What's the criteria about that? if not based on the score test. As Dr. Lucas just mentioned, the Chinese trip, I get the education from China in K2 college and get an advanced degree in America. So I know how competing in China about the student. So that's why I also want the kids in America get the more challenges course for them. They have a lot of free time after school compared to uh, in China. So there is international competing in the future. We want our kids to get the more good education from here. That's all I say. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'll, I'll also have Mr. Ray contact you. All right, we have two discussion items, and the first one is an update on the OASIS program from Ms. Blakely, so can you join us, please? Thank you, Mr. King. Thank you all for having me here again this evening for year three <laughs> to update you on OASIS. So it's always an honor. The last two years have been fast and furious and fabulous, and so it's good to be able to keep coming and telling you how well things are going, and hopefully we can do this for a very long time. Um, so OASIS, as you probably remember, is the Olin Tangi Academy supporting individualized success. And I really don't want to get into a lot of the logistics of OASIS this evening because most of you have already heard them. But you do have a handout that spells out a lot of specifics about the programming. And I want to just welcome each of you to our family welcome back dinner, which is going to happen 
August 13th. It's a good opportunity for the board to get out and see the program, see the families, talk to families, and get a sense for their perceptions and why you know families are interested in bringing their kids in the numbers that they have been to Oasis. So that's your formal invite, and then you have a handout with a lot of details on it. So feel free to look at that on your own, call me, email me, ask questions. Um, because tonight I'm really just going to give you updates. I know that you have a lot to do this evening. So um, we at Oasis, uh, and the PowerPoint's very brief, but our goal is to put together an individualized curriculum for every student that we have, put together a plan of developmental support for every student that we have. The kids that come to Oasis, for whatever reason, are not flourishing in the current settings that they're in. So they've come from every middle school in the district, every high school this year. We ended up serving 108 students this year. And you may remember that um, two years ago, we had a nice article in the paper about school starts with two students. And that was, <laughs> it was nice that we got the PR that we did, but we went from two kiddos that first year to 44. We started this past year with 22, went to 108. And then we're looking at starting in the fall with 68 already. So at the rate we're going, we're looking at about three times growth in all areas each year. So it's been pretty good. Um, the, one of the primary goals of OASIS, and when I came to the board, you know, several years ago, some of you were still here, but when we started having the alt-ed discussions, we talked a lot about these alternative education sites around Central Ohio. And historically, Olin Tangi spent around $300,000 a year to purchase seats at different sites in Central Ohio for these very exceptional cases where there were students that, for whatever reason, we didn't feel we had the capacity here in the district to educate appropriately. One of them was, say, the Kessler Horse Farm, which was out on the border of um, Union and Delaware County, Rockbridge Academy down in Worthington on 161. So we were really sending kids all over central Ohio to the Arts Academy in downtown Delaware. And part of what we came and talked about years ago, like when we talked about the barn on 3Bs and Ks, was that we can do this better some way here in Olentangy. We can keep these families invested in the district and we can send a very firm message that every child can be educated successfully in Olentangy. And I, I really feel that was a huge message to send out to families. So we have worked hard over the last couple of years to continuously eliminate seats that are purchased externally. This year we reduced another 21 seats, which is um, a savings of $193,000 for money to the district. That doesn't count transportation costs because they were fairly hard to quantify, but we are not sending kids, you know, 18 miles each way to, you know, Delaware or Union border. So those uh, savings are probably pretty decent too, but they're not in there. And again, those families are coming to Oasis. They're having a solid, you know, successful educational experience, and we're keeping those families here in the district. We are also offering families choices, and I'm, I'm glad to have a family here this evening that sort of is one of our families that we have we, in the program that we offer at OASIS, we have to wear lots of hats because we want to keep families here in Olentangy, and they may be interested in leaving for lots of reasons. You know, and we saw, and again, these are numbers that you have seen historically over the last few years, every year Olentangy loses around 120 kids to community school programs around Central Ohio. Those, a lot of times, are virtual programs like ECOT, Ohio Virtual Academy, sometimes though they're bricks and mortars programs like Oakstone Academy and sometimes life skills in Columbus. So again, we as a district said, you know, we, we can help these kid out, kiddos out here. You know, we don't need to send them. We can't allow them to leave when we can offer the same product here and then keep those families invested in the community. And again, we have a family that's going to be staying in the district because they want a unique educational experience for their young woman. They travel a lot. They have a very bright child. They want to take advantage of being able to have a flexible educational experience without homeschooling their students, you know, without having to go to a charter school program and leave the district. So that's, a, I mean, that's a huge boon. Those are the families that we're keeping because we are offering them a product that's, that's going to not only satisfy them, but likely send their you know, children into something very successful. And so 20 students were prevented from leaving for virtual programs this year. And those are hard numbers where we had students with withdrawal slips in the um, guidance office or in pupil services offices saying, we're leaving Olentangy to go to X organization. And those folks in those departments said, please stay in Olentangy. Please explore Oasis, see if this is a good fit. And so we know definitively that we kept 20 kids from leaving. And we also brought back seven students from different programs, which since we're only serving you know, the high school and middle school populations, we're, the, there's a lot of kiddos at those lower grade levels that we can't offer you know, the delivery for quite yet. 
And so we're working on that though. But we brought back seven and we had 40 students work entirely virtually this year. So we never saw those kiddos. And so there's a good chance that those students also may have left for a virtual experience, you know, but they went to their, they didn't necessarily say I'm withdrawing. They just went to their counselor and said, this is what I desire. So that was about a savings of $155,000 for the district. And you know, as we've talked about before, that fun caveat of state funding is that when a student leaves the district to go to a community school program, we don't just lose the modicum of state funding that Olentangy gets at roughly 7%. We lose the whole per pupil, you know, minimum state funding of about $5,500 pulled from our local tax base, travels to ECOT. You know, and so we really have to work vigorously to keep those families here. And that's our continued mission at OASIS is to offer a product that can keep as many families satisfied as possible. Uh, that said, here's a shot of our kiddos, and I was sort of um, chuckling looking at uh, Dr. Lucas's shots of China and how much they contrasted our <laughs> oasis shot here. But I will say, we both have the primary goal of creating well-rounded students. And we really, I mean, we have, uh, we have beautiful students who are kind and, you know, fascinating individuals. And they, we create a family atmosphere that's part of that family welcome back, lasagna dinner, you know, come in and do the logistics, do the work with us, but also sit down and be a community together. So we've got 68 students set to start in the fall, and uh, you know who knows where we'll be next fall when I come back to visit you again. Any questions? Is this is it all virtual all day? Um, that's okay. No, and it's there's some answers on that handout, but in general, we have a four-hour time frame at Oasis, and kiddos can attend for that entire four hours or some portion of it, or they may work entirely from home. We put together an individualized attendance contract. And then, so it, it is online learning for the most part while they're there. Is that, would that apply to like the parents that stood up about the math courses? Is that for anyone to come in with special needs like that? Or is it just physical needs? Or no, all sorts of needs. And the APEX software that they were referencing is what our kiddos use during the school year. It's also what we're using for summer acceleration right now. And I'm watching about 100 kids take math classes through APEX right now. And it's rigorous, it's challenging, and, but with the right adult support in place, it's a very solid delivery model, but go ahead. My nephew who's taking the algebra one through the apex um, I talked to my brother-in-law the other night. He said it's wonderful and he's high-level Science military background Good. and he just thinks it's great It was and there they want to now look at other programs that are available then that's good feedback to yeah. hear, and it's well. I I, I I never hear from a family that this isn't rigorous enough. Yeah. You know, I sometimes hear from the opposite end, and so that's good to have that feedback because I mean we really wanted to be sure that what we were doing with our programming could meet the the benchmark of the Olentangy classroom. We we don't have the handout you're talking about. Oh, I'm but sorry. I take care in sending it out. So you just, that KT? we all keep flipping through our papers, but it's coming. Between between okay. There's a typo error. But Good. I'm sorry about no, that. I'm so sorry. you're I gonna, and I almost made copies too, but we just all kept That's looking, right. and we didn't want us to keep looking. <laughs> Do they have? We it didn't have it. I'm trying to think of some of the highlights on there, but it basically just talks about the programming, our eight to noon time frame, transportation provided, really the connectivity back to the buildings, and that all of our kids stay cross enrolled with their home schools. They can take classes at Olentangy High School and at Oasis, or they can go over to Berkshire and take classes. It's really whatever that family wants because we want to make sure the experience is tailored to what's best for the student. Can you give an example, just like a basic one, of a regular student versus someone that would require this or need it, desire it? Um, well, they're very... Yeah, they're, I mean, we're across the continuum, so calling anybody a regular student is probably hard to do. They're all, you know, they're all unique, but we have lots of kids that just, for whatever reason, didn't fit in, you know, maybe they have social anxiety issues, or, you know, they just really struggle with that big building, but they're really academically talented, or maybe they're just sort of academically talented. You know, so we've got, a, we've got all levels in our programming. And we definitely get the stigma of being for at-risk kids, which is an absolute yeah. disservice because, you know, the, the kids that we serve are taking classes at Columbus State, mm -hmm. doing AP level courses on their own, successfully passing the test without a direct instructor, you know, writing apps for ACES that get approved, you know, <laughs> by Apple that I don't even know how to use. And so, I mean, they're really, they are very bright students. It, you know, we're, we're all across the board, which makes it fun and challenging. So. And please come down, not, you know, if you can't make it on August 13th, just stop by anytime. Because really, getting in and just seeing the programming while it's happening is what matters. That, that's the good stuff. Because it's, it's always an enjoyable time with those students. Good. 
Yeah, and I think a lot of students too who want to, um, who do, who are really excel on their own, they can, <coughs> if, once they've completed, you know, their their class, they can go on to the next class, and they're it's really tailored to them. We talk about individualized learning, and yes. that is the really individualized learning. They're the ones I get most excited about because yeah. I don't want to push them through their academic experience, but I tell them, you know, you could be done by the end of your junior yeah. year with high school classes and all that, you know, going to Columbus State and taking the classes or graduating early. I mean, it opens up so many avenues for those kiddos who, who want to move at a, you know, fairly quick pace and, and, you know, still have a good experience. So we've got students working like crazy. We've got about 40 students doing work this summer from Oasis with that eyes on the prize, you know, finishing up early at some point. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah, and our, our student who early enrolled at Ohio State um, in order to play spring football, mm -hmm. that's how he completed exactly. a lot of his um, requirements. Exactly. Um, so he was doing coursework at Olympia G High School and then going to football practice and going home to complete his coursework online. Yes, and that's, I mean, a testimonial to the hard work mm -hmm. of those students. So any other questions? Okay, enjoy the rest of your evening. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks, Thanks, Jennifer. We also have a second reading for our policy number 8330. Linda uh, Martin is on vacation, but Julia is here. If there's any questions specific to the uh, policy, did you want to address anything, Julia? Did you? Quickly, I, I don't have anything specifically prepared, but what this is is just your student records policy. At the first reading, there were some questions. It's gone back to the policy committee, and I believe they've amended a few things to address some of those concerns. Um, but by and large, this policy just reflects a lot of state law and federal law and what um, those laws require of school districts generally to do when it comes to student records. And as I recall, there were one or two sentences that were added that mm -hmm. we had not had previously. Yeah. Yeah, there were two places where we inserted language. Um, one was to deal with mother's maiden name and social security numbers um, to reflect the district's current practice, which is not collecting that information. Uh, but in the event that it is part of the student's record, that it is treated as confidential. Um, and then the other piece was really just kind of repeating a section of the policy in two different places. So it was very clear that the district is not uh, routinely collecting information to sell it to anybody for marketing purposes and that the district is safeguarding any uh, directory information that it does possess and making sure that uh, that information does not get uh, provided to profit-making entities so that they can try to uh, make a profit off of student information. Any questions for Julia? Thank you very much for being sure. here this evening. Thank you. Okay, do we have any comments on the, the second public participation? I have none. Okay, thank you. Treasurer's action items, Becky. Like present treasurer action items A and B for approval. We have a motion. So second. Second. Discussion? Please call the roll then if you would, Becky. Ms. Dunbar? Yes. Ms. Fiesel? Yes. Mr. O'Brien? Yes. Mr. White? Yes. Mr. King? Yes. And superintendent's action items with a couple of changes. As present, superintendent action items A through H, um, eliminating for separate vote, not eliminating, I'm sorry, separate vote for A3 and a separate vote for item C. So right now, just to make sure we're straight, uh, we are approving A1, 2, 4 through 10, B, and D through H. A motion, please. So, second. Second. Any discussion? If you would, please, Becky. Mr. O'Brien? Yes. Ms. Fiesel? Yes. Ms. Dunbar? Yes. Mr. White? No. Mr. King? Yes. And? As to present Superintendent Action Item A3 for approval, please. We have a motion. So moved. Second. Second. And discussion. Um, I just want to point out last Sunday in um, the Columbus Dispatch, there was an article on page C8 um, that mentioned um, our new athletic director, yes. and um, it applauded his efforts with the work that he did with um, Ohio State Athletics. 
and um, so I'm in and that was in regard to their academics and so I am glad to see that he's on board there was also another nice article in this week about him um, and mentioned the uh, two books that he has written on the student athlete so I think that's a great hire I would agree likewise I was really impressed. those were great articles mm -hmm. I was very impressed with the academics support side of his career and certainly welcome him on board other discussion Please call the roll. Ms. Dunbar? Yes. Ms. Fiesel? Yes. Mr. O'Brien? Yes. Mr. White? Yes. Mr. King? Yes. As presents Superintendent Action Item C for approval, please. Motion, please. So moved. Second. Second. And discussion? I just want to say on the policy 8330 with the student records, I, Linda's not here, but I appreciate her inviting me into the policy committee to look at it and that they added the the few lines that I had concerns with and uh, just want to say I appreciate it. Other discussion? Becky, please. Ms. Dunbar? Yes. Ms. Fiesel? Yes. Mr. O'Brien? Yes. Mr. White? Yes. Mr. King? Yes. And we will have the executive session. We, we will come back into the room to adjourn, but there'll be no further activity this evening. And uh, a motion and a second to enter the executive session as permitted by section 121.22 G4 of the ORC for the purpose of preparing for, conducting, or reviewing negotiations or bargaining sessions with public employees. Do so you have a motion, please? So and, and a second, Stacy, I think? Yeah, sure. Okay. Kevin's first. Any discussion? Could you please take the roll? Mr. O'Brien? Yes. Ms. Dunbar? Yes. Ms. Diesel? Yes. Mr. White? Yes. Mr. King? Yes. Thank you all for your attendance this evening.